Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Johnny. And we're from Coldplay. And uh, we're in the bakery, which is our studio, which we've been uh, living in. Well, not really living in, but working in for the last five years. Five. It's five. The title of our record is Milo Xyloto, which is a uh, some. It's, it does. It does seem silly at the moment, but one day I don't think it will, because we wanted to come up with a, a new couple of words. To we when we called our band Coldplay, everybody <clears throat> was confused, and so we thought we try <laughs> we try that with an album title. We didn't. We thought it'd be nice to have something that didn't mean anything else except what your imagination wanted it to and uh, doesn't have any other hits on Google. And no, no other language. No, no. Just a new thing. It's just a new... Like like Coca-Cola or Google or something like that. One of those words that everyone says, what the fuck does that mean? And then eventually it comes to mean that album. We started writing this as soon as pretty much Viva La Vida was released. Um, almost probably the day of. I think that's when that album was totally finished for us and so it was time to sort of start thinking about what was wrong with it and how we could better it or do something different or say something different really. And uh, Brian Eno wrote us a letter saying the work we did was good but we could do more or something. We can go further with the next one. So uh, we got, got started straight away. He said jump, so we, we said how high. So I think a lot of, a, a, probably there's quite a lot of eno -y stuff. Sometimes he didn't actually do it, it's the funny thing. Quite often the most eno -y stuff, he doesn't have any part in. Those are the bits he says, no, <laughs> you can't have that. It's eno -y, but it's made all with hitting instruments really fast. There's completely, uh, the, the, the Milo bit at the beginning is just kind of everyone trying to shake off any nervousness by, by playing as fast as possible. And it just makes this kind of washy. But for, we did it because for playing Glastonbury, we knew we'd be nervous, so it's good when you start a concert to do something which gets you all uh, fired up. Charlie Brown came along very early. In fact, when we first started recording, we were kind of trying to do it an entirely different kind of record, but a very acoustic record. And, and Charlie Brown was on that in a very sort of different guise. Well, it had an accordion on. Yeah, it's like some kind of French cafe music. And that's why Guy said, we can't do this record. <laughs> we have to plug in again. Yeah. So, it's, it's, so it's, it's been very important for us, you know, for the two years we've been, or, or more actually, that we've been working on this album. That's yep. been constantly. I like, I mean, I, I'm not, I know our lyrics are a bit shit, but um, those ones, I like them a lot. Because uh, it's about fight, have, sort of kind of escaping in the city and finding a buzz somehow. Uh, it started off being about, I, was, I had my scooter nicked. <clears throat> and I was thinking, what, what, would, what journey would that bike go on? You know, why, you know, with the kid that stole it. So it started out about that. And then it became a bit, so I'm not saying it's a pro uh, scooter theft song, but it's, it's, it's about making your own entertainment. The song Paradise is kind of crucial. Like those two, those two, I don't know if it's the best or but it's, when you, when you have a song you feel you can build everything else around, it's, you, you need to have one of them at least on the record, I think. They give you a reason to, Make like the others. Yeah, make the album. You know, right now the idea of making another record seems utterly appalling. But I think the main reason is that we have nothing to sort of hang the rest of the songs off. You know, we've no idea where to start or what. what whereas once you get those songs, they become very important. You know, guide, guides where you're going to go.